Welcome. I'm Donna Rodriguez, and today I am honored to be hosting this special program discussing local veterans, veteran services available in our communities, and upcoming events celebrating our veterans. I'm joined by two veterans who have dedicated their post-military service to supporting fellow military veterans and their families. I'd like to welcome Roxanne Whitbeck, Veteran Services Agent for the towns of Plymouth, Kingston, Plimpton, and Carver, and VFW Commander of Post 1822, Dennis Russell. Thank you both so much for being here with us today. Well, thank you. Thank so you, Donna, for having us. us. Well, this is, this is just a fantastic opportunity. We're recording this in October um, mm -hmm. to be able to talk about not only Veterans Day, which is coming up to honor our veterans, but also all of the services available because it's pretty amazing. But I'd like to start by each of you talking about your service because you are veterans yourselves, as I mentioned. So thank you. Thank you. Dennis. We'll go to Roxanne. You'd like to start Ladies with Roxanne before gentlemen, first? Okay. Sure. All right. Roxanne, tell us about your service and what led you to, uh, to serve as well. It's so, I mean, my father was a, um, a, a Korean War veteran. Um, but, you know, I didn't really know him when I was growing up, so I didn't re really know that fact till later. But I don't know. I was just walking down. The, I, I didn't have enough money to go to college, mm -hmm. so I thought, what can I do? So I, I uh, was walking down uh, Main Street in my hometown in Biddeford, Maine, and went into the recruiting station just thinking, oh, I'll just get some information. Two weeks later, I was in boot camp, so they, <laughs> they saw me coming. And, but I'll tell you, it was the best thing I've ever done. I served 13 years honorably. Um, I attained the rank of E7 or uh, Chief Yeoman, and um, I'm very proud of my service. And my son is current. Well, I've got one son that's currently serving it right now as well. So that's wonderful. very proud, Mom. What What stands out for you, or what do you think the biggest impact your service has had on you personally? Oh my. Um, well, when I first joined, the, a lot of the um, military was mostly men, so we were just kind of up and coming. So. It was nice to see that kind of movement. And even in my job as a veteran service officer, when I first started like 14 years ago, there wasn't a lot of us, but there's a lot mm -hmm. of us females now. So I think I'm just most proud of my service as a female. My job as a veteran service officer as the first female in Plymouth to have that position. So I think, yeah, that's, that, that makes me very proud. You've been leading the way in a lot of different ways. Thank you. Over the years. Thank, and thank you. you. You were just a wonderful support. And we're going to get a little more into what you do now sure. um, to support service members, veterans, and their families. Dennis, tell us a little bit about your service. Uh, I, I um, enlisted in the, uh, in the Navy. And it was During a Vietnam, uh, time. During uh, Vietnam era, excuse me. I, I, yeah, I did. And uh, that was probably the, reasoning why, the reason why I did decide to enlist. I had a friend. Uh, at the local supermarket, and uh, he had gone, but he uh, he was killed in action, and I figured uh, this is my turn. So uh, I remember at boot camp, and I think did you, were you where were you in boot camp? Was it Orlando? Orlando. Okay, she was in the she was in the, <laughs> the nice zone. I, I, I was I was up at the Great Lakes in the middle of winter, and I'll tell you, <laughs> it wasn't so nice. Being when outside, you wake up in the <laughs> barracks and there's ice on the inside of the windows, yeah. you know it's cold out. <laughs> But um, what I did was uh, I had uh, um, decided that I wanted to uh, do my duty, and uh, Vietnam was part of it. So up at boot camp, they asked if there was anybody that would volunteer. And I recall a number of us stood mm -hmm. up and volunteered for service in Vietnam. Thank and you. And it was on the, your dream sheet, as it's called. A lot of veterans watching will know what the dream sheet is. That's when you put down where you want to go, you know, Honolulu, and they'll send you to Kodiak, Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, my family served in Alaska <laughs> also. We, that was one of our stops. <laughs> but my wish was granted when I put down Vietnam. They said, okay, so you're going to go. Uh, we, we deployed in um, right, right at the end of 71. We crossed the Pacific. Actually went, went through a typhoon which I thought was great at uh, 21 years old, um, ha feeling weightless as the ship went up and down. We were taking the Kitty Hawk over. The other destroyer cracked oh. its hull. And so that got uh, uh, redeployed to Midway, I recall. And anyways, we took her over. And the, the, uh, um, the time that I was there, there was another offensive, a big offensive. Like in 68, there was Tet Offensive. In 72, there was the Easter Offensive of 72. So we were heavily involved in that. And I guess one of the missions that uh, was significant was when we went up to North Vietnam. We were, we were usually north of the DMZ. The furthest south I got was Da Nang. 
but we went north, took out SAM missile sites so that President Nixon could announce that Haiphong Harbor was being mined to block the incoming flow of supplies. And, um, and it was uh, televised, it was timed and everything. It was quite a mission. We actually led it um, and the, um, because the, the admiral was unfortunately killed in an accident uh, who was putting the, the whole plan together. And he, um, um, obviously, the plans then rested on the shoulders of the captains. And our captain uh, led, led us into the uh, mission, and we were successful. We made it so that the SAM sites were taken out. Uh, our jets came in. The mines were dropped, and Nixon was on TV telling them, at this time, the mines are being uh, um, dropped in Haiphong Harbor, and they were timed so that they gave whoever wanted to get out some time to get out. But it was significant because eventually it, it put enough pressure on the North to go back to the Paris Peace uh, Accord and uh, come up with some type of a resolution. So, it's amazing. So that was that. that. Was that was that? That was a good mission. We uh, we did um, we were engaged at just about every every time there. Uh, lost one of our guys and a number of them injured when we got hit. Uh, but um, it's um, it's um, history, and I'm very happy that today uh, the the respect that's given mm -hmm. to veterans of all types is there. Uh, it wasn't back at that time. And that was something I wanted now. to ask you because uh, particularly for our Vietnam veterans, um, mm -hmm. that I've I've heard in being a, a family member too. My dad served in Vietnam. Um, that when you came home, people really were resistant to you, were expressing their anger and their feelings towards our veterans. And so you really weren't getting the respect or the support that you needed. And most veterans, when they came back from Vietnam, either just shut that all down and did what they needed to do and exactly. moved on with their life and never talked about it, or really experienced severe difficulties. It's true. Years later, when you look back at this, and, and Roxanne, I'd love to hear your opinion too. I'm so thankful that people now recognize our veterans and recognize the service that yeah. you have given because we can't even imagine if we have not served ourselves. Do you think that that makes a difference in how you connect to other veterans? And do you think it's been Absolutely. becoming easier for... Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about that because I, I imagine I, I can empathize and care, but I can't truly understand well, at your the, experience. At the post, I'll just give you an example. There's a number of uh, Vietnam veterans, and, and we're happy to have our, our younger veterans come in. We, we encourage them to come in. We offer so much. And um, what, what I see is a, um, a comfort zone. When, when I'm talking or, or another Vietnam veteran is speaking, we're comfortable talking to one another. Um, it wasn't like that. Uh, I remember... Uh, taken a flight out of, uh, uh, out of uh, the Philippines, because that's where we, we, we went to after we were off the gun line, and uh, flew back 17 hours later. I landed at Travis Air Force Base, and I was greeted with a uh, search, and then uh, told by the um, officer there, don't wear your uniform in public. I, I was shocked at all this. I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared for this at all. So uh, when I realized what was going on, um, like many other Vietnam veterans, uh, we, we were called some names, and Baby Killer was one of them. Uh, and so I just kept my mouth shut for over 30 years, and that was that. But now it's different, and the younger generation is really what, um, for me personally, changed, uh, changed the whole picture. Uh, these youngsters today uh, have a level of respect that, that is just so welcoming and it's okay for us to speak about experiences and how that reflects on on your life um, personally I look at it as um, I appreciate family friends uh, at a much higher level than I think I ever would have yeah, had, I had I not experienced tell me about like your that. Well, Your experience in working with veterans, remember, we'll get into that in more in, in a minute. In um, 2016, we, we, Plymouth was one of the first towns to jump on the 12-year proclamation from the president to honor, um, to welcome our Vietnam veterans home. 
I chose to go on the um, the earlier side of it, you know, because it's still going on now. But I, we did ours in 2016 because I knew at the rate these, that, that these veterans were passing and the Agent Orange diseases that they were suffering from, you know, I wanted to get as many as we could welcomed home. So we had a, um, a welcome home ceremony at Memorial mm -hmm. Hall in 2016. And I'll tell you, that's probably one of the, other than going to a concert there or something, but one of the times I saw the hall pretty much full and it, it yeah. made me so happy and so proud. And um, I just said, if that's the last thing I do in my job as a veteran service officer, I'm leaving on a high note because it was so well received. We had a, uh, a beautiful ceremony. We presented them each with a challenge coin. We fed them lunch. We just honored them and welcomed home and gave them the hugs that they should have had years ago. So that's one of the best things I think I've ever done in my career as a VSO. It, it was incredible what she put together. And uh, people don't realize what goes into something it's, to pull something off like that. Um, and and, and <laughs> I remember so seeing her just just uh, inundated with with phone calls and getting this <laughs> ready and getting this this lined up. And I got to tell you, uh, every Vietnam veteran that was there um, will agree with me. This person walks on water <laughs> when she pulled that off. It was it was phenomenal. Anybody who works with her and will we'll, tell you that. <laughs> and we'll, you guys are it, it was it was in, it was incredible. It was an incredible time, and it it brought back. Uh, the, the thought that, that I had when, it, when I arrived at Travis was, what's this all about? I remember my father, World War II veteran, and he stormed the beaches in Normandy. And I remember him, the only thing he, he and I spoke about was, um, and we, didn't, we actually didn't speak about much of our service at all. Uh, I, I do regret that. Um, but what he spoke about was a nine-course meal that they had upon returning. <laughs> And I was kind of wondering, where, where's like, my nine-course nine? meal? You had it well, with Roxanne. That That's was right. the nine-course right meal right so, there. So there's so much that I want to talk with both of you about, and we have limited time. Sure. Um, let's talk more about specifically the services that are offered here in Plymouth, mm -hmm. and then maybe what are some, what are, might be some of the barriers to people reaching out to the services. Massachusetts is the only state in the country, from what I understand, that has the level of veteran services built Absolutely. in yeah. in the Commonwealth. Both state, both mm -hmm. statewide and on a federal level, obviously. Um, yep. In Plymouth, we run a program, or any any town in Massachusetts, Mass General Law Chapter 115, which services veterans that are 200% below the poverty level. A lot of our seniors on, are on fixed incomes, so it's really imperative because, you know, if they didn't have this program, what would they be sacrificing? Their medicine, their heat, mm -hmm. you know, they would be sacrificing something. So yep. we're lucky enough to be able to be able to provide those services. And also we have a, a gift account for people that are just right above that yep. threshold so mm -hmm. we can help them. Um, but we go above and beyond. And Thanksgiving's coming up. We are taking names for people, any families that need that need baskets where we call our office we'll take their name make sure we get them on a list um, you know we have people that do coat drives and blanket drives and things like that so that's all coming this time of the year so if, um, I know people don't always like to ask for help but when somebody comes in our office yeah. it's always like what can we do for you what can we do to help you we're not you're not here for a handout we're here to help you give you a hand up and there's a big difference. And that's the thing that I think is just so amazing and welcoming about your office is that you know so much more than so many of our veterans out there about the services that are available. Mm -hmm. So it's not even necessarily going in to ask, but I think veterans should go in and meet you. Absolutely. Because you told, you've told you told families that I know and my family as well about services available that, that, they, they, that they earned, but they, they were know due, about. and they don't know about that it's make true. a significant difference in people's lives. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the main barrier to people getting support or connecting with it's you? It's just the knowledge, I, I would think. Uh, just knowing that, um, for, well, the, let me kind of preface the remarks by the um, Veterans Day program that we're put to, putting together. Something totally different this year. It's, it Excellent. is totally different. Roxanne came up with this idea, and, we, and we're running with it providing a meal as a way to say thank you, and it's going to be provided by uh, Roxanne's office, the VFW, the American Legion, and the DAV. And these are, these are some of the support groups that we have, uh, fortunately, that we have in Plymouth offered to uh, any veteran that's out there, family members that come in. I, was, I happen to be 
people were waiting for a meeting the other day, and a veteran came in and uh, getting rehabilitation for, for an injury that he had and so forth, and uh, needed some additional support, came in, and it, it was like uh, just clockwork. Uh, yep, okay, you need that, we got mm -hmm. this for you, we got that for you. And, and then you could see Her it magic in fingers flying over the keyboard, <laughs> signing them up for it's all just, of the services that they are due. But it's, yes. ju it's just to know that. And, ju and just so I can just uh, briefly, with, with her office and what, what, what's done through there, the other, some of the other supporting groups, uh, VFW. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we're a national group, um, the combat veterans in foreign wars is, is what we, uh, we uh, have as far as membership mm -hmm. is concerned. And then there's um, the American Legion mm -hmm. that provides uh, a number of uh, services. As far. One of the things is they have a food pantry on Tuesdays, Fabulous. I believe it is. Mm -hmm. And, and they're, they're providing food. We, we, we've provided food, and especially now where the price of a loaf of bread is, is just, it, it's, it's making people, well, well, listen, do I have my medication this week or do I have a, a meal like right. that, that I have and going back and forth so and we have run bring... some of those programs to, to give uh, food uh, for, uh, for for people who are in need mm -hmm. and I think you bring up a wonderful a wonderful point kind of the, a bigger picture here there are so many veterans serving other veterans you all there really is it is a family I've learned over yeah. the years. Absolutely. No questions asked, no matter where you served, what branch you served in, what time in history you served, you are a family. Brothers and, and whether sisters. you are in need of help or can provide help, that's what's available for our local veterans. So through your office, people can just introduce themselves, find out a little bit more about your office and how they can get involved. Right. But I'd like to talk a little bit about the service organizations too, from a from a bigger picture mm -hmm. because I think there's been a misconception over the years that I hear some people say, oh, well, that's just a place people go and drink. drink. Right. Yeah. And that right. really isn't true. And I'd like both of you to talk a little more because one of the things that impresses me too about this area is how the service organizations work together. Absolutely. And you are all so active and out there all of the time, walking in parades, helping communities, people who are veterans and people who aren't veterans. There's so much you do. Tell me a little bit more about the service organizations and how, they, how they're a part of this community. Can I just interject for one second? And Absolutely. this isn't a, a veterans organization so much, but boy, did I have an education about the American Red Cross. And we have a chapter right here in Plymouth, and they are phenomenal. I mean, they don't just cater yeah. to veterans. They cater to uh, people in general. But, boy, I'll tell you what, their mission is pretty much similar to what ours is. What mm -hmm. can we do to help you? You know, whatever it is, they're, they're awesome. We we are very lucky with the with the level of service organizations that we have in our area and yeah. the amount of support that's available. And if we don't need the support, we can volunteer and we can be a part of it. Exactly. You were telling me before we started recording today's show um, that there is a theme for this year with our service organizations. Can you talk about that a little more? Sure. We thought it, it would be uh, very appropriate to try to get the word out. And I think that is part of the, uh, the obstacle, if you will, as far as, uh, okay, I'm a veteran what do these groups do? And one of the things that we decided to do for Veterans Day is to provide a meal as a thank you to all veterans. All veterans, when they, when they, when they put their, their hand up and they take that oath, they don't know where they're going to be assigned. You know, it, it might be, you know, over the Mediterranean. It might be in the middle of a desert with somebody shooting at you. It, it could be anywhere, but they've all made that pledge and they're willing to sacrifice their life for the freedoms that, that everyone enjoys. And I, um, we want to recognize that through the groups. Uh, as I said, the VFW, the Legion, the DAV, uh, Plymouth's Veterans Office. And the, those services go well beyond what they may realize. Some of the things just recently, now we have our, our, our state office and I get uh, information all the time. And we follow it. We follow up with that information and give it out. Uh, lately, the PACT Act, which allows now additional benefits for those uh, who were affected by some of the burn pits, uh, going back then to Vietnam as well. Um, uh, hypertension. There's there's uh, there's so there's many a couple health of issues other they're issues. Finding. And this is what veterans may not be aware of. So mm -hmm. this is why it's it's important to pick any one of them. 
they're all dedicated to, uh, to the veteran and become a part of it and then see what you can do. But to go beyond that, we serve the community and we go out beyond that. We've got scholarships that go out uh, to our students in recognition. We have a, um, a VFW is currently right now in the middle of a Patriot's Pen, a Voice of Democracy, where you can get over $30,000. That's for the, crazy. For the, it's crazy money for, for college tuition. That's and it, it's phenomenal. writing an essay, Get them in. Get them in before Halloween, and we'll get you in the in the contest. <laughs> but we were we were uh, privileged to have one of our teachers as recognized as um, teacher of the year. All went all the way up to national, uh, and he he was recognized at this state. It does a great great deal of uh, of work for the, uh, for veterans. But information, you, you go down to Roxanne's office. You go over mm -hmm. to the Legion, and yeah, the uh, this the stereotype is oh, that's just a place that people go and drink. No, it's not. Um, yes, you can come in. You can sit down, enjoy the camaraderie of, of others. But we ha we have fish fries over, over there. They have a, they have events at the Legion. Uh, mm -hmm. that everybody's invited. Comedy nights to benefit a uh, a program uh, which will benefit the community. Yeah. We focus on community and focus on the veterans in our community as well. I said, uh, I would say that that's probably the, one of the biggest points that uh, people need to re recognize and realize. I mean, you have horseshoe tournaments, you know, things like that. Uh, but these guys, and I know, I know probably mm -hmm. most of them, they're dedicated individuals. Um, the, the guys, the gals that are involved in all of this from, from Roxanne's office as the director. She, she has a plate full. But we try, and we talk to one another. It's not like there's, there's, there are no walls. It seems to me that it's healing. Um, because it as, is. as we talked earlier, so many veterans, um, particularly from your service period, didn't always feel that they could talk about their experiences or they could express themselves. And that's part of healing. That's part of recovery. Absolutely. But being able to, you've got, a family. You've got mentors with our with our senior veterans supporting our younger veterans. Um, it really is a place. It's a healthy space and place to be. It really is. I couldn't agree more. Tell me, Roxanne, uh, what is what feeds you about your job? I think a lot of it's kind of obvious, but what is the thing that's most important to you about what you do and what you take away every day from what you do? It's helping people. It's helping people, and I could go on and on, but there's some stories out there where, say, uh, I'll just give this example. A surviving spouse of a veteran that committed suicide was turned away from the VA saying that they didn't think that his suicide was service-connected. And she fought for many, many years, and some, somehow God put us in our paths. We crossed paths, and I said, oh, what? Oh, we're taking up that cause, and we're running for it. She got the claim. She got the retro back to when he um, committed suicide. She got a, a, um, a, a drop in her account of over $250,000. That was a life changer. That, that to me was like, her oh, my family. God. And that's just one of many, many stories. But they're all, they, you know, when those, when they get that claim, they're not out there claiming because whatever. This is important to them. This is something that's happened to them. They just want to be validated. And when that claim comes in and it's a positive result, the validation's right there. And you know what? It's the least. That's what I find is my most important job is, is helping those veterans. That's what I am here for. You do change people's lives every day. And, uh, and I'm so grateful that God has given me that <laughs> job. Trust me, I don't take that for granted for one minute. Well, yeah. I don't mean to, to, to embarrass Roxanne, but <laughs> a, a big W, a big win. And I'm going to just share this, if you don't mind. My buddy, and I was speaking to you earlier about it, but I think it's, it's worth repeating. Uh, a buddy of mine that we, we served shoulder to shoulder in every mission that there was uh, became ill, and I had been encouraging him to file uh, for support. He didn't, and we would call each other. would call each other all the time, but on Christmas Day and um, a year or so ago, about a year and a half ago on Christmas, I called his, his daughter answered and let me know that he had uh, been stricken with a stroke. And I said, well, you gotta file for, for a claim because these other things that he's been dealing with, he hasn't. Well, she was all confused about it. I made one phone call to Roxanne and uh, I told her the situation. She got right down to it and said, not to worry, we'll take care of this. Filed 
the necessary claim paperwork follow all over up. the phone because he was, mm -hmm. was just, geographically located in Florida. <clears throat> he was, and then I got a call a year and about a month or so later, it was his daughter saying, "You'll never guess, we got a check. He's not worried about paying his property taxes now, and they've got support com coming in for him." It was an incredible phone call. Those are the things that don't. That, that aren't televised, really, mm -hmm. that aren't in the newspaper, that aren't on social media. But these are things that happen every single day. And, and many it's times through these organizations. Don't know that it's they available don't to them. They don't. So, that's why it's so important too. to check in. So we welcome, we welcome all veterans. And we, and we got a, the old guard, and I'm part of the old guard. Um, we need to bat, pass the baton, too, and encourage uh, the younger veterans that. They're welcome. We want to help them. Yeah. There are many things that uh, you don't need to, you know, put your pride aside for a moment because you earned it, you deserved it, and you put your life on the line so that everybody else can deserve and earn and enjoy freedoms that, uh, that otherwise wouldn't be provided. So And they're, they're, they're our future. Sense, so. They're our future. Yeah, they are. We need so to we want them get people to step up so that as we age out of it, that there's somebody who's going to make sure that this, that this is taken care of because it's so important. Not that we're getting older, but we're certainly not getting <laughs> any younger. I speak for myself. You're getting better. We're getting better. There we go. Every day. Okay. Okay. Now, we'll, we'll, we only we'll have a moment or two left sure. in the show. Um, so in, in closing, I'd like to encourage everybody clearly to reach out to your office if you are a veteran, if you know a veteran, and we will provide all of the contact information Fabulous. so they can find out more about the services available to them, mm -hmm. um, but also how they might be able to support other veterans if, if that's something that they're able to do. And also take a look at our service organizations locally. Absolutely. And, We're and here for find, you. Find your family members and also find out how you can support each other. Okay. I can give you each about 10 seconds. Do you have any final words for our audience? The only final thing that I would like to say is, you know, how we were saying sometimes veterans don't come, don't come because they don't know if, they, you know, maybe they don't think their question is valid or whatever. But I encourage anybody, if anyone has any veteran issues whatsoever, please just come by the office, make the phone call. If we don't know, we'll get you the answer of where you need to go next. But no question is a stupid question. No question is a silly question. They're all valid. This has been an amazing conversation. I'd like to thank both of you for being here today, for sharing your experiences, and for your service. And we will be providing for our viewers information about how to reach out to them and everything happening on Veterans Day. So thank just you. Just let me thank us. everyone too, oh. uh, everyone listening too. I just want to thank everybody. Right to the that, camera if you'd like. Uh, and and uh, I will tell you, many of us saw firsthand what freedom costs, and you're worth it. We just want you to understand that. Uh, we, what we do, we do for you. And so just enjoy your family, enjoy your friends. Thanks. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. God bless. And thank you for joining us today.